For the past few months, our area has been in a drought. And we have definitely yeah, noticed for it. For sure. The ground has been hard and the water level in our pond has gotten to be, well, a lot lower than it typically is at this time of year. But thankfully, we recently got some rain, much needed rain. And along with that, the temperatures have gotten to be a lot colder. I definitely think we're in store for a colder winter for sure. It's been crispy in the morning, if yeah. you want to say so. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting our wood stove fixed because last winter, someone was trying to shut the door and I wonder who it that got someone was. cracked. Mm. I don't know who. Somebody was is trying that to use a little bit too much brute someone. force. I'm yeah. not sure. Not sure who that guy Maybe is. Maybe. Oh, oh, oh wait. No. Yeah. Could be me. Yeah. Susan. I well, I'll let you guys figure that it, one out. It was me. It was me. But I got to looking around for a replacement for our wood stove for the glass and they don't make this model anymore. So I was looking around and the price was $800 Crazy. for a replacement. $800 mistake. Because they didn't make that <laughs> model anymore. So. I got to searching around on the web and I found somewhere that you just give them the measurements of your glass and they will ship it to you for like 150 bucks. That's that a lot better than 800 bucks lot, for yeah, sure. A lot better than 800 bucks. So then I had to figure out how to get this glass out of the door and that was a challenge all in itself. The screws had been there for years and years. So I had to work on getting them loosened up. What exactly are you doing here? They're tight, so I'm gonna. I've seen where if you heat them up, you'll um, it'll loosen them up. So I've already put WD-40 on them. The other where are they? They're screwed. And I don't want to strip the head because I don't know how we would get them out of here. I'm going to try heating it up. Why well, I need a screwdriver, a regular screwdriver. Why is that? Because if I can get it started moving, I can play around with it and then spray some W30 on it or WD-40 on it and uh, get it out. This one's already loose, but none of the rest are loose. This little craft heat gun has been worth its weight in gold here on the homestead over the past 10 years because this is what got us out of the house whenever we actually got iced in the house and the front door wouldn't even open. I used a heat gun to melt all the ice so we could actually get out and then that well more than one time whenever the pipes froze and I went underneath the yurt this is what I took. The heat gun is what uh, got our pipes Clear. Both of those times were pretty crazy. You wake up and then you can't go outside your door because <laughs> everything froze shut. So that was interesting. <laughs> and then no water because the pipes are frozen underneath the house. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing with that? What are you doing there? What are you doing? It worked, it worked, it worked, it worked. Watching YouTube does pay off sometimes because I saw <laughs> this on YouTube. So you just heat up the screw and it made it easier to come out? Yeah, so this guy, he was, I think, um, he got old tractors or old equipment or something and he had heard that if you heat it up that it was easier to take apart and that's what I did because this one was not budging before. So there's that one. We'll see if this one, any of these will. Oh! That didn't sound good. It broke the tip of the screwdriver! Are you flipping kidding me? Whoops. Look at that! Okay. So after some WD-40 and a lot of elbow grease, I finally got all the screws out. All that work you went through because of somebody's crazy mistake. Man, I'm just being too, too forceful. We're going to Thank give you. grace to the person <laughs> that broke the, the glass but it was a pain to get those screws out but finally i got them out so i could make a template of the glass to make sure i had the right size 
And thankfully, that's not our only source of heat. Thankfully, we do have a mini split system that has kept us warm in the meantime. But we definitely like to have two sources of heat for sure. And that's something that I usually recommend for everybody to have. Have two sources of heat. One that's not dependent on electricity. And uh, Because so we know what it's like to only have little space heaters, electric space heaters, and it be cold. Yeah. And it's not fun. And you never know, if you only have one source of heat, something could go wrong with that one source, and then if it's gone, you have no way of heating yourself. So having right. two sources, if one goes down, you have one as a backup. And I think it's really, really important to have as one of those heating sources one heating source that's not dependent on electricity, gas, or propane. Definitely something to keep in mind. And along those lines, I've been thinking here recently about having a backup source of power to power things like our phones in cases of emergency and other things like that. So I recently ordered a Champion power station. And this power station is supposed to be good for powering things like your refrigerator for up to 23 hours and other things like a CPAP machine for like 26 hours. So I'm not totally sure all the ways that we will be using this power station, but I'm looking forward to having it on hand and putting it to use and at least having it as a backup source to power all kinds of things. And I can see where that power station will come in really handy with power and tools as we set up our second yurt. And you may not know this, but we've lived in this one 30 foot yurt for nine and a half years. And as our family has grown and now there's six of us, we need some more room. So we're setting up a second yurt. And right now we're kind of in the hold stage. We're getting our plans digitized so we can go ahead and submit those and get started yeah the hurry up and wait phase is what this one is but ready to go but yeah that, that power station can definitely come in handy for setting up the walls and drilling and cutting things and all the different things that'll need to be done once we get that project going and it could also be used on another project that we have planned and that is for our off-grid pond houses <laughs> that we are looking to get finished and have that be just kind of an off-grid place that you can kind of just get away the kids can go play in it and if you just need some quiet time without any anything distractions. <laughs> distractions or whatever just go to our pond house which i'll be talking about that more as well as another our other year in some upcoming videos plan to talk about those things so so our off-grid pond house was never really finished it's just been sitting here and over the time especially this year the rain has just been washing things around i didn't build it but when it was originally built here it was put on these posts here and it doesn't look like they were put in concrete or anything like that and right now these posts are just looking really really bad so i really want to get this pond house finished so it can be like this off-grid house for us to come hang out in the kids come play in like this ultimate off-grid playhouse but we got to keep this thing from collapsing. Definitely could see the power station being used in the off-grid pond house for sure as well. Pond house. You make it sound like it's a second home or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'll just kick you out there when I get aggravated with you. How's that? You'd be like, go ahead. Kick me out, Lacey. I'm going to the pond house. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> and with the messier weather and colder temperatures, we really haven't gotten into really any new projects. Just been yucky. Uh, we've just basically been doing the chores and normal things around here. 
but we have recently gotten some new processing tables for our processing area and in that area another project that I'm looking forward to working on is building an overhang on that area so that way when we're processing our chickens and ducks and turkeys it'll be even more comfortable but recently the boys have been adding some field dirt around there just to help support the concrete and make the area even better and they did a really fine job with that hmm let's see what else Oh, we did save some turkeys from our Thanksgiving turkeys. We saved two black artisan turkeys, a female and a male. And, oh, and last year we saved a bourbon turkey. So his name is Bruno. This year we hope to get him some females to offer him some companionship. Because he, he is handsome. <laughs> and every time you walk by, he's all yes, he fluffed is. out and has his <laughs> little soul patch is what I call it. Because it's on his chest and it's like these hairs that are sticking out. But he's all puffed up and walking around and strutting his stuff. Yep. He's really cute. He, yep. he needs some girls. So I ordered some turkeys baby turkeys from Murray McMurray to helpfully have him some females this year. But back to the black artisan turkeys. Well, the male, he, he's, he's nice looking male too. But the female, I went out there and she left us a surprise. Whoa. Look at that! Look at what we have here! I think I know what that is. It's a turkey egg! Check out this turkey egg! Our first one here! I know it's a turkey egg because the chickens are in here and the turkeys are out here! Pretty cool! I never thought about this before, but I have never had turkey eggs. I've never eaten a turkey egg. Have you? Let me know in the comment section below. I, I, I'd like to know because I haven't. Have you? I have never had turkey eggs. No. So we cook up the turkey eggs. Just a little bit harder. The chicken egg. Almost like a duck egg. Whoops, that's different. Interesting. Interesting. But the look of the yolk looks pretty much just like chicken egg. Love seeing that rich color. Alright, so let me try some scramble. Let me try one over easy. Or fried. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Some Redmond real salt. It does look like it's just generally thicker than a chicken egg. Duck egg's pretty thick, but it looks even thicker than that, I think. I'm not sure, but it, it feels thicker. Alright. What's your favorite way to have eggs? My actually preferred way is scrambled. I would say scrambled first, omelet second, and then fried or over easy. I like it.
All right, let's see how these taste. I was trying to do some research to see like a comparison with nutritional facts and things like that. But it's hard to find info on turkey eggs. There's a lot on chicken eggs, of course, and even chicken eggs with duck eggs, but not turkey eggs. The only thing I did find is that, which I just learned, that the eggshells are thicker. The flavor is supposed to be milder, and turkey eggs are supposed to have more protein. But let's just see. Here we go. Here we go. Hmm, it's different. Yeah, uh, not bad. Let's see how this one tastes. Let's fry it over easy. Mm. Mm. I kind of like it better. I think the whites of the turkey eggs taste better than the chicken eggs. Mm. It definitely has a, a different flavor. Uh, almost like a a wilder flavor <laughs> that makes any sense at all but yeah it's pretty good mm. ah, with some fresh real milk from her cow too yummy wonder if anybody else wants to try some hey guys anybody want to try some turkey eggs no thank you no thank you you're declining my goodness here i worked hard for these eggs what about you sailor you want to try some turkey eggs? No thanks. Come on, I can't get any takers here. What are you, what is wrong with you people? Ah. I'll try your turkey You'll try eggs some? Just All right. for you. Let's see what okay. Lacey thinks here. What do you think? Yeah. Turkey eggs. All right, scrambled. Tastes like eggs. Tastes like eggs. I think it has just like a, a slightly different flavor. But I think the- Maybe just a little, but- Yeah. They taste like eggs. Got some scaredy cats for kids. Fine, I will try some. Oh, you changed your mind? You changed oh. your mind. Good job. Yeah. See how you like. Tastes different. Mmm. You like it? You actually like it? Even oh, yeah. though you were scared? I think they're a little richer. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not as not they're not rubbery like duck eggs can be sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah. So they're like a richer chicken egg. Yeah, yeah. You saw? You want to try some? Are you hiding? No, thanks. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have any of you guys had turkey eggs before? Let me know in the comment section below. But that was those. So if she's starting to lay any more, I'm just going to go ahead and stick those in the incubator so we can have some black artisan turkeys for next year. And raising your own meat is so rewarding and tasty too because those turkeys were absolutely delicious <laughs> <laughs> that you cooked and made this year mm, yummy and, and it's it's so rewarding and tasty <laughs> raising your own meat it, it really is and this year we've gotten feedback from others who we actually were able to sell turkeys to this year and they really liked it as well so definitely plan to raise more turkeys this year and speaking of things that are, are tasty we recently got a roaster. I did get a turkey roaster. In the video about the turkeys, uh, several of you guys asked if I had ever used a turkey roaster and I had not. So I was super surprised when I got this big old package and opened it up and it was a turkey roaster. And I have to tell Susie, thank you so much for my turkey roaster because now, it's one of my favorite things in the kitchen. When we first got it, Mike took it outside and turned it on to make sure we burn off all the chemical smell and everything. So if you get one, make sure you do that outside because it smells kind of bad. And then after that, washed it out really good. And I proceeded to not cook turkeys, but chickens. And one of my favorite places to eat is a place called Viva Chicken. And they have these rotisserie chickens that are Peruvian style. And they're just absolutely delicious. So I was like, hey, Lacey, would you try to make a Peruvian style Actually, chicken? Actually, what he did is he went online and found himself a little <laughs> recipe. And then he texted it to me. He was like, hey, can you please make this for me? Yeah, I was like, yeah, be good, right? So I got all the ingredients for his Peruvian chicken. <laughs> I slathered them down in the sauce, all the spices and the oil and everything, and then 
put them in my turkey roaster and I can fit two large chickens in that turkey roaster so it comes in really handy when you got a lot of mouths to feed like we do because people eat a lot and with that meal she also had brussels sprouts she had some squash that was like mashed squash or whatever it was butternut squash sweet potatoes and carrots that I cooked in the instapot and then I blended it up with my ninja that I really like that I got recently and y'all really like that and she also made this really good green sauce to go with it it was the best sauce I've ever made just to let you know I don't say that about my food very often but that was the best I can't disagree all of it was fantastic and the chicken one of the best I've ever had. Oh, those look delicious. So I did two chickens. I did one breast side up because it had more skin on it. And I did this one breast side down because it got caught in the scalder and it didn't have much skin on it on its breast. So I wanted it to be in the juice while it was cooking. So which one do you think is going to turn out better? I don't know. We'll see. This one looks pretty juicy right here, man. So does that one. <laughs> the breast is best with sauce. Okay. I'm rich. I'm all set. Green sauce too. This meal is uh, top notch quality here, man. Flavors. Whoever made the chicken, I gave, I gave him an A plus. I agree. Chicken, chicken tastes fantastic. She even made the green sauce, <laughs> like Beaver Chicken has as well. Yummy. Daddy, I got a song for you. Yummy, 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 yummy. yummy. <laughs> so it's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got this one here with the crisp on it. And then this one here, both of them have really good flavor and really good tender, but and really tender. But I like this one a lot. So which one did you say is which again? So the one that's got the little crisp on it that I like, and that one, which one's which? This one was cooked breast side up. Okay, so that one's breast side up here, yeah. and, and then, this one was down. Yeah. So my choice is down. And it was so easy to make in that turkey roaster, really. You know, remember the Ron Co infomercials where you said it and forget it? <laughs> That's what came to mind while I was making it. So, Susie, we all thank you for the roaster. It was delicious and we plan to continue to use it. Can't wait to use it on turkeys, too. And while we're on the topic of gifts, I want to thank my friend from the Netherlands. Hopefully, I don't butcher her name, but Aswintha for my scarf with the sleeves. We talk on Instagram and I posted something about somebody needs to make me a scarf with sleeves like I saw in an Instagram post and she said, I'll make you one, I've got the pattern. And I was like floored because that's so sweet that she took her time to knit it for me and mail it to me. Uh, so thank you so much and I love it, it's nice just to wear around here, just to have a little bit, uh, you know, extra. Where's toy. mine at? Hold on. Hey, no whining, no <laughs> whining. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. He don't wear scarves anyway. <laughs> I, I am totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good on you. Thank you very much, I love it. Nope, I'm good. Nope, I'm fine. <laughs> and Sayla was recently blessed with some skirts from a viewer. Janet reached out to me and saw Sayla had been around the farm in some patchwork skirts, which she wears all of her own accord. We do not force her. I know some people think we force her to wear skirts, but that is not the case. She really loves them. But Janet mailed a few skirts to Sayla and she absolutely loves them. I think she has worn one like every day since she got them in the mail. Oh, wow. These are... Whoa. 
And it's so pleasing to see Sayla embrace her femininity and womanhood. She's she's physically strong, but then she's also she really embraces her femininity. And I just I just really enjoy seeing her around in her skirts. And she's also an excellent cook as well. She's recently been making cookies and all these different goodies for us. So <laughs> I, I just love it. She's she's just a great daughter. Just a great daughter. <laughs> Uh, but I also have some some decent boys too. They're all right. <laughs> and here recently we've gotten involved with Trail Life. It's an organization similar to the Boy Scouts, but it's more biblically based. And the boys and I have been going to Trail Life every Tuesday night. And one of the things that we went to with Trail Life, one of the meetings, we got to go to a fire station. And the ladder goes way. <laughs> Up. There. Well, the boys got to see, they showed them all about a fire truck, had all the lights and all the tools, and got to see all that. And then they also got to see inside the fire station. And the firefighters would show them their gear and where they slept and where they ate and all the different things that they do. It was really neat to see. And at the end, they did a fitness test and it was, pre it was pretty neat to see him do this fitness test. I'm like, all right, let's see how my boys are gonna do because it wasn't the firefighters showing off their strength. They were like, all right, boys, let's see how strong you are. So Micah was involved with the fitness test and let me tell you, I was pretty happy and pleased with what he did. The One part of being a firefighter is being physically fit. Being physically fit. Okay? So what I want you to do, where you're standing, and I want to see who can last the longest. And when you when you're out, go over and sit on that wall for me, okay? All right. And all I want you to do is your feet shoulder width apart. Then I want you to go down into a squat. Oh, uh, this is how it is. And I want I want you to hold it as long as you can. You have to come up out of your squat and you fall down and go sit against the wall. We're going to see who the winner is. Fit Farmer has some fit boys, right? <laughs> he did pretty well on the squat holds, as well as he did a really good job on push ups. And he did a really good job on the plank, too. Keep your hips up, Micah. Hips up. Oh. You got to go now. Oh. <laughs> and I was really pleased to see my boys in their farm fit. <laughs> the exercises that they do here paying off in doing the exercises there at the fire station. Pretty neat to see. And it's also been good to see Josiah. He's just maturing and growing up right before our eyes and doing harder things on the homestead like shoveling out the truck with mulch or in certain areas and shoveling dirt and carrying bags of feed and you know he's just growing into a little man right here before us. And he's been saving up his coins for a while now on his piggy bank and this past week he was like I want to go get my coins cashed in for some cash and I'm like all right let's go do it so we took them and <laughs> it's, it's good that he was saving them up and we were able to turn those in for some cash and Hezekiah he's just getting so big he turned 10 months old this month and this first year is flying by and before I know it he's gonna be one he already has his little top little teeth coming in and he's so cute and he's walking around holding on to everything and soon he's gonna be walking on his own and it just goes by so fast and he's starting to eat all these other kind of foods now it's pretty interesting the all different things he's trying to eat and <laughs> some things he's not supposed to eat like don't eat that don't eat that but then there's this one particular food we're gonna talk about this in an upcoming video but it's just pretty neat to see him <laughs> he's just gobbling it down ah whew, let's see i think that's about it this is kind of a video where we're just telling you what's all's happening on the farm and our life. 
So, whew, I think we covered most of those things. With just I think so. Everything that's kind of happened this month so far. <laughs> but just a reminder, we do giveaways on a regular basis. I'm going to be announcing those giveaways on our community post. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So that way you can know and stay in the loop. Oh, and make sure you sign up to get notifications too to make sure you know that when we're releasing a new video and when we're, the giveaways are happening. So make sure you stay in the loop. See you next time. I see you. <laughs>